I was trying to figure out what I'm going to give as a message this uh, Sunday. And as I, I stay in the presence of God, I cannot help it but the gist of the message goes to prayer. Just this morning at 6 o'clock, the 24-hour prayer chain of the Jesus is Love Church ended. It started yesterday morning, 6, 6 uh, a.m., and it ended this morning, Sunday, 6 a.m. Next month, it will be every month. People of God, we need you. Maybe it's safe for me to say, I want you to go with us and pray. Because the signs of the times is already pointing on the coming of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Are you amenable for that? Kapati man kamuna, do you believe that Jesus will soon come? Amen. And if God will come, the pattern is the same. When the disciples kept on praying, they went to the upper room. That's the time that the Holy Spirit, they were waiting for the Holy Spirit during those times. When the Holy Spirit came, they were there in the upper room praying. And if we are waiting for the coming of Jesus, may Jesus, hallelujah, come and see us praying when He, came, he, when he comes. The same, it should be the same. The church should be a praying church when Jesus comes. The church should be in a posture of awaiting the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the jest and the message this morning will go on that. But the title of the message is The Axe Head. And somehow I was telling Pastor Janet this morning, I said, Mommy, look at the title. And the title is not somehow suited to the text. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, However, as it is written, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love God. Who loves God here? Sinong nagahigug masa ginoodere? then this is for you. If you love God, there is something that cannot be seen. There is something that cannot be heard. There is something that cannot be deciphered that is for you. Say this to yourself, it's for me. It's for me. The things that I cannot see, the things that I cannot hear, the things that I cannot perceive, yet, <laughs> yet is for me. The things in which God has prepared in advance, hallelujah, is for me. <laughs> hallelujah. Somehow it's kind of very, very far from the title, the axe head. But saying the axe head, I'm going to read to you 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. And it says, The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the, to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place where a place there for us to meet. And he said, go. This is Elisha. The one of them said, won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied. He went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. We entrust to you the preaching of the word today. Holy Spirit, here we are. We are willing to learn. 
And may our learning will not just stay on our head. But Lord, it will be a fuel so that we can do what you have expected for us to do in righteousness, in holiness, in service, be it in worship, O oh Lord, be it, Lord, in serving others for your glory and honor. Heavenly Father, thank you for nourishing our spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for this message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> you see, there are times that you, you can just read the Bible and then begin to be amazed. There's no problem with that because the Lord that we serve is an amazing God. He is full of surprises. He's full of miracles. What He did is more than our minds can conceive. And let me tell you also that in the Bible, there are lots of misinterpretations of the Bible and it is also brought about by wrong translation. Okay? And so, let me usher you with this word. He said there, when, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out. He said, then the man reached out his hand and took it. <clears throat> Many times, I would be asking things, did it really float, Lord? Hindi tungkol kay nagadaut ako sa ginoo. What really happened? And you see, I always tell you this. If you ask the right question, the Lord will give you always the right answer. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I asked the question, it's really Lord, and the Lord brought me to a lexicon Bible and uh, you know there there is a translation there from the Hebrew remember this is this is uh, Old Testament old basta Old Testament you refer that to the to Hebrew New Testament you go to Greek because the New Testament was written in Greek the Old Testament was written in Hebrew now I want you to understand <clears throat> That there are several words here that attracts my attention. It attracted me to the word borrowed. The word borrowed there comes from the Hebrew word shaul or shaul. Okay? Shaul or shaul for the English. It means, it means to ask. Also mean inquire. If you are borrowing, you ask. If you are borrowing, you inquire. But one scholar said, wise man, wise man said, it is not necessarily about asking, it's not necessarily about borrowing, but it's actually about praying. The word there, asking, it does not mean necessarily that he really borrowed it, but the sentence, sometimes we are using the word, it changes the meaning of the word. It depends on our usage. Nibla? In the same also in the Greek word, in the Greek uh, 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 language, when they use that on a different context, uh, maybe we can translate the word into borrowed, but actually it means prayed upon. Hallelujah. It means it was prayed upon. Hallelujah. It was prayed upon. And so, look at this. I'm going to explain this later. The company of the prophets were planning to build a bank house, maybe a mission house, because the place that they were gathering cannot contain them. And so they asked permission from Elisha if they can build a bigger one. And so they went to the Jordan. When they went to the Jordan, they asked permission from from Elisha, and, and Elisha said, yes, go. Maybe this, this, uh, this uh, 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 band of prophets are under the tutelage, meaning under training, and their teacher was Elisha. Maybe lang. This is just my hunch. 
No? So, they, they went there and built a, a, a uh, mission house for them. A, a prof uh, I, I think they are building... They are building a prophetic school <laughs> in our present times. It, it can be a, a prophetic school. So, you see, to make the long story short, they were cutting trees in order to build their, the, the meeting place. And so, one of those prophets, one of those who were there, were cutting trees, and the axe head flew away, went to the water. Of course, when it sunk down, sank down to the Water, kapin pakon murky ang tubi. You cannot find it right away. Hallelujah. And so he said, "Oh, it was borrowed." As I have said, this was a serious loss. Iron those times was present. Was present then. Ara ng iron ng ang ang metal ngani. It was there already, but it was not so common that it will not come to them. Cheap. So when that item is very scarce, then it will come very, very expensive. And you can feel the grievous feeling of somebody who lost that axe head that went to the water and said, Oh, Master, that was borrowed. Can you imagine the feeling? Hinulam mo lang, tapos nagtabog, hindi mo na makita. Ano na lang na? And that item was very, very scarce and it's not cheap. It can be very, very expensive. Hallelujah. Tama ka mahal. Now, but you see, making the matters worse, rightfully grievous to the man who borrowed it, you see, nadula sa iya nga kamut. It was lost. You see, however, when I try to look for that Hebrew word, as I've said, borrowed, is not actually, it does not actually came from, from the word, it, it, it come from the word, I mean, Shaul, to, to ask or inquire, but ang original meaning niya, when it is used in a sentence, it, it shows that it is not actually borrowed, but actually it came from, it, it, it becomes I asked for this. It means had been asked for. It means had been begged for. Or it has been prayed for. This item, have, ha, I asked this item from the Lord. I prayed for this item. This is very scarce. Imagine lang. Kung may ara ka sa isa ka cellphone, ngay kau lang nang may ara sina, that would be very very expensive, right? Kung may ara ka sa klase the kind of diamond that only you are the ones, that kind of diamond, you are the one very unique. You are only the one who handles it, who have it. That diamond must be very very expensive. That precious stone must be very, very expensive. Notice nyo ang mga klasisang mga Ferrari, ng mga salakyan, mga uh, ano pagida, mga nagmi, ng mga mga hurokana, no, ng mga salakyan. When it is being sold, mga tagtatlo lang na kabilog sa bilog ng kalibutan, it will be very, very expensive. The same is true with the axe head that that man was holding, and it went on. To sink on the water and nowhere can be found. Hallelujah. But it was not just simply borrowed, it was begged from God, it was prayed for, it was asked from God. Amuna lang na nga dokas masinulubun gig katama sa tubangan sang tao nga nadula ina makahalang uyus gidang situation. Kabudlay gidin sindihon. So, the original meaning, as I've said, is one has to beg for it in order to have it. Because it's easy to cut trees with those instruments, with those tools. Hallelujah. Aripagid. I want you to, I want to refer you to the word stick. 
The word stick there comes from a Hebrew, Hebrew words, it's, E-T-Z. It is translated as wood, translated as tree or trees. Meaning to say, it is not just stick nga daw, munika dako ang ginhaboy ni Elijah siguro, but it's a wood. Or it can be tree ang ginhaboy niya. So what would happen if kung ihaboy mo ang ang dako nga kahoy, hindi lang stick. Here's another one. When Elijah threw the wood or stick to the water, hallelujah, what happened? The axe head float. But the word there is actually, ano ganyan yung, ano sinadiri? Va, hindi ko balo, vayetzef. Budlayan ko ma-pronounce. Vayetzef. Which means, hindi saya gin-translate nila na float, but actually it's flow out or overflow. Mean to say, when you are holding a tree, when you are holding a wood, and you throw that to what to the water, what will happen? The water will overflow. The water will flow out. Simply put this way, there will be a flushing of water. Matamsak gid ang tubi. And sa pagtamsak sang tubi, there goes also the accent. May imagine nyo, ginkwa, na, na, ginhaboy ang, ang uh, nag, nagtupa dito ang accent, nasubuan gid ang naka disgrasya sa to, and then, nagambal sa baw, ginulam ko lang to, but actually, siling niya, I prayed for that. I prayed for that. I prayed for that. And so, Elisha said, where did it fall? So there, it fall. Nagkuha sa sang wood, ginhaboy dito ang wood, nagtamsak, nagkuha upod sa tamsak ang axe head. Can you imagine? It, it did not only float something like that, but out from that water splashing out, the axe head went out with it. That's what happened. That's what happened. You see, when I was reading this, I was really amazed. I was really amazed. This is just a short message for today. Next slide. Second Kings. So, but there is there there is a, a uh, there are verses there. Let me tell you the the summary of the verses in between of those. There was a a quarrel, a fight between the king of Aram and the king of Israel. So they fight each other. Every time the king of Aram would gather his officials and they would say, we are going to trap them in this place. We are going to set an ambush in this place. The Lord would tell that to Elisha. Elisha would tell that to the king of Israel. And so, the king of Aram said to his officials, who is a traitor here? <laughs> Who is a traitor among in our midst? Somebody has been telling the king of Israel what we are doing here and what we are planning here. And the official said, no, there is no somebody here. It's the man of God. The man of God was telling Elisha, uh, sorry, the, the king of Israel what we have been planning here. And you see, people of God, you see, people of God, the, the uh, king of Aram was very angry and they tried to locate where Elisha was and they find out later on that he was in the city. And then he gathered all his armies and surrounded the city. And when the servant of Elisha saw, it was not Gehazi, Gehazi has already were out of the equation because he has already the leprosy during those times. Hallelujah. So the servant of Elisha says, Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? <laughs> what shall we do? And then Elisha said, Don't be afraid. The prophet answered, Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. We are 
always in the winning side. Wala lang kamu kabalo. We are always in the winning side. What did he say? Those who are with us are more than those. Meaning to say, we are on the majority side. Hallelujah! We are on the majority side. Hallelujah! As you can see here, the eyes of Elijah's servant was open when he prayed. The enemy was struck down by blindness when he prayed. Elisha's servant's eye was opened when he prayed. The verdict for the enemy of the, of the Son of God, hallelujah, for the servant of God, the blindness was there. It was implemented. It was given to the enemy when Elisha prayed. Look at that. When Elisha prayed, the horses and the chariots of fire all around Elisha were already there. Wala lang makita sang servant ni Elisha. That's why Elisha was very calm and his servant was panicking. Oh Lord, there's so much of them. And Elisha would just say, oh, don't worry. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Why? Because Elisha already saw them before the opening of the eyes of the servant. Hallelujah. So before we are praying, before we are praying, the answer for our prayers are already there. If you know that fact, you will not stop praying. And if you have not prayed, you will start praying. Knowing that it is your prayer that will unlock the answers to your prayers. Kahapos mag-gather sa mga tao na mag-join sa concert. The same people. Hinyoon mo nga magpangamuyo, wala kagid sang kwaon. I hope this will not be the case for all the Christians. Hallelujah. 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 You know what was wrong here? You know what was wrong here? Pastor, nagpangamuyo man ko. I prayed and I prayed, but you know avail, wala gid, hindi ko ka avail sa pangamuyo ko. Maybe you are you are praying the wrong prayer. The Word of God will guide you on how to pray and what to pray. Sometimes we need to change the content of our prayers. Hallelujah! Instead, Lord, answer my prayer. Maybe you would pray, Lord, open my eyes to see my victory. Because the answer to my prayers, even before I open my eyes, the Lord has already, has already, that ready answer to your prayer. It's right there. Before the servant's eyes were opened, Elisha already saw, he saw already that there are so much chariots and horses of fire around them. Hallelujah. Maybe you will change your prayer the way you, you pray. Maybe you change it. Hallelujah. Maybe you are using the wrong word. Pastor, how am I going to do that? Read the Word of God. I discovered it when I read the Word of God. Many times we cannot avail the Word of I mean the answers to our prayers because we fail to pray according to the will and the Word of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Again, let me say this. Maybe we have been praying the wrong prayer. If you will not soak in worship, if you will not seek God in prayer and in His Word, your prayers will never be upgraded. 
Abi nyo mga kauturan, panamay nami ala ni Hambal. Abi nyo mga kauturan, panamay nami lali isang grammar mo sa tubangan sang ginoo. Oh, no. But when you are reading always and meditating on the Word of God, God will give you the right words in what to pray and how to pray it. If you are amazed on how Pastor Alianet would pray, if you will be amazed on how Pastor Ron would pray, if you will be amazed on how Pastor, Pastor Antog would pray, it's because of the longer time that they spent in the presence of God, studying God's Word, and God is giving them the right words in, in order to utter so that words will create something in the heavenlies. People of God, hallelujah, if you will not soak, many times we pray that God, you know, you, you pray, Lord, sustain me. Kabudlay na gid, kapiot na gid, sang, sang pagpangabuhi tungod sa pandemic. You pray for God's sustenance. Hallelujah. You pray that God would sustain you every day. But are you praying the right prayer? Are you using the right word? You ask God to sustain you. That's the byproduct of what you are supposed to have. That's the result of the prayer God will sustain you. I want you to look at Psalm 51 verse 12. Amunigin patog silinga namon sa nagligad dito sa mga metropolis, no? Nga grupo. Hallelujah. Psalm 51 verse 12, it says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Being sustained by God is the result, actually. Being sustained by God. Are you, are you praying for God's sustenance? Are you praying that God would sustain you? Don't pray for, for God to sustain you. Pray for a willing spirit. Our prayers are not answered because we are using the wrong prayer. We are uttering the wrong word. Nanamian lang kita nga, Lord, make me rich. That's the result of hard work. Maybe you pray, Lord, make me a hardworking person. Pag pray mo nga, Lord, prosper me, Lord. Huwag ka ganig, apurso righteousness, paano ka prosper ni Lord? I mean, maybe you would pray, Lord, make me righteous. Lord, I want to pursue righteousness. I want to pursue holiness. Lord, give me the passion and the love for your word and the love for righteousness. I think maybe you have to change your prayer and you have to use the right word. Look at that. It said, Ara lang sa pulong sang ginuo to do. You are praying for sustenance. You are praying that God will sustain you. Pray that God will give you a willing spirit. Because the willing spirit is the one that would sustain you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Our prayer should be changed from sustain me, Lord, to give me a willing spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. The answer and the key to our victory is just a prayer away. Ara na to sa kawaan. It's right there in the heavenlies. But the servant of Elisha did not see it. It takes for Elisha to pray for him in order to uncover and to take away the scales from his eyes in order for him to see that there are more than chariots, there are more than horses than those who are uh, in the enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the reason why God said in James 5.16, the prayer of the righteous one, the prayer of the righteous person, hallelujah, the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. That's why God said, Amuna, powerful and effective. Who is a righteous person? It should be the righteous person that makes, that has the powerful and effective prayer. Who is the righteous person? The righteous person is the one who has the word of God. 
who obeys the Word of God. And by obeying the Word of God, He expresses His love to God. Because the Word, the word of God says, those who love me will obey me, will obey my commands. Righteous persons are those who love God. Those who love God will obey the Word of God. Hallelujah! 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 You can see here in this situation, you can see the difference of a prayerful man and a non-prayerful man. Hallelujah! You can see the difference. Hallelujah! You can see the difference between the prayerful and the non-prayerful. The prayerful, the prayerful have already seen it. The non-prayerful needs the prayer of the prayerful to see their prayers answered. <laughs> Liwaton ko ha? Liwaton ko ha? Ang mga hindi mapinangamuyuon, ang mga wala nagapangamuyo, ang mga talagsa lang nagapangamuyo, nagakinahanglan sa pangamuyo, sang mapinangamuyuon, para masabtan ang ila mga ginapangamuyo. Palakbaki si Jesus. Wala ko nagasiling hindi ka mo magkanto sa elders. Kaya ara mana sa Bible, if you need prayer, you go to elders. Wala ko naghambal nga hindi ka magkanto kay pastor, kasi pastor mapatawahay. It's our responsibility to pray for you. Nevertheless, kung hindi available si pastor, kung hindi available si elder, kung hindi available si Brad nga pirmi nga nagapangamuyo, kay kung ikaw mapinangamuyo on man, right there, when you bend your knees, your prayers will be answered. Amen! Amen! Hindi na maghulat nga may magpangamuyo pa para sa imo. If you have been doing this, God is just a prayer away. And the answer is on the way. Hallelujah! 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 And about to end. 1 Corinthians, balik kita sa aton na text. 1 Corinthians 2.9, it says, However, as it is written, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love God. There's only those who love God. Let me say that again. So only those who obey God's command. That this promise of God is given. Who would have thought that by splashing the water using a wood or stick, the axe the, the axe head would just flow out or float? When you pray hard and ask or inquire of God, He would not just allow, hallelujah, that your prayers will be drowned in the water of forgetfulness. Hindi na pagbabayan sang ginoo ng imo mga pangamuyo malumos lang sa tubig. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to pray like never been before. We have to change our prayers according to his word. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, my prayer tonight today, oh Lord. I pray in Jesus name that each and every one who is listening and watching and is attending in this place, Lord. I pray, O oh God, that you will stir, that you will create a need for them to pray and to love your word and to have that hunger and thirst, hallelujah, of your word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We have to change our prayers according to His word. We have to do the unthinkable. Hallelujah. It was a prophetic act in which Elisha threw that wood, that stick, in the name of Jesus, we have to do the unthinkable as our faith capacitates. Hallelujah. The key is His Word. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. It is in prayer that we begin to uncover what the eyes cannot see. It is in prayer that we begin to hear what the ears cannot hear. It is in prayer that we can decipher, that we can sense and perceive the things that human mind 
cannot conceive. It is in prayer, people of God. Hallelujah. It is in prayer. Our spiritual insensitivity will dissipate and our spiritual antenna will be upgraded or as long as we pray in the name of Jesus. If you pray, no longer will you be blind. If you pray, no longer will you be dumb. If you pray, no longer will you be insensitive in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we receive the victory. We receive the victory. Change our language, oh God. Change the way we pray, oh Lord, according to your word. Today, we present unto you, oh God. We present ourselves before you, oh God. Make us prayerful. Make us love, oh God, your pres presence. Make us love, Lord, your altar. Make us love, oh God, your word. Let us hunger and thirst for it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May prayer pagin mga kauturan. Gakon kita gani taugun sa pagpangamuyo hindi tamang hindi. Why? Opportunity na. Lastly, sang una sang pirmi ako ginasugo, gamay pa ako, ang kambiyog pirmi ginahatag sa ako. That's why nanamian ako suguon. Bakal to si Garilio. Bakal to Amuni, si Buyas. Bakal to ang Amuni. Kay kumay sobra ang sobra ako. When you are serving God, God will not give you the leftover. Kung leftover man, isa ginaya ka basket. Doon duman nyo, the feeding of the 5,000. Hallelujah. The 12 disciples receive one basket full of fishes and bread. Hallelujah. Why? Because the remaining, the leftovers, was 12 basket full. Each one received one basket of leftover. So it doesn't matter when it is leftover. For as long as it comes from God. But don't pray, Lord, biskan leftover na lang akon. You see, God is not contented in giving you leftover. God is always a God that refreshes your soul. So God will not just give you a leftover. Hallelujah. Keep on praying. Push. Push. Pray until something happens. Push. Push. You push, you keep on praying. Push. Why pa nagwa ang imo ginapangamuyo? Why pa nagabot ang imo ginapaabot? Why pa nagabot ang promotion? Push. Pray until something happen. Push. Hallelujah, people of God. And do not allow the enemy to steal your blessings away. Hallelujah. Push. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can you just raise your hand upon heavens? Heavenly Father, lead us, Lord, to pray. Make us, Lord, obedient to your call today. Let our hearts and our mind will not just be set, O oh Lord, on our daily basis, on our daily needs. But, Lord, there are things in the heavenlies that are yet to be uncovered. And we have not uncovered, Lord, because we have not been praying. And so, Lord, Make us prayerful so that, Lord, we can avail what has been given to us. What has been given to us. It is just right there. It is just right there. It's just prayer away from us. But we never receive it, Lord, because we fail to pray. And now, oh Lord, that we know these things, make us, Lord, prayerful. Ha <laughs> ha. For if we begin to pray, we will begin to be blessed. When we will begin to be blessed, we shall overflow. And when we begin to overflow, others who have not had Jesus in their lives will begin to see the difference between them and us. And Lord, let your glory shine through us. Hallelujah. Thank you, O God, for this opportunity now that we can pray. Teach us how to pray. Teach us what to pray in Jesus name amen and amen 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Palakbaka natin si Jesus. Dira man sa inyong nga mga panimalay. Palakpaki si Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.